We're joined by Wyatt Hoback here in the OSU Entomology Museum to talk about an interesting beetle that is actually endangered in Oklahoma and other places. Yes, the beetle I work on a lot in Oklahoma is the American burying beetle. It's a federally endangered insect, the only one in the state, and there's a large population here in Oklahoma. It occurs over about the eastern third of the state and so uh, is abundant sometimes of the year and does some great things for farmers out there. In terms of its endangered status, give us a little history lesson on that. Sure. The American bearing beetle was once one of the most common insect species in North America. It occurred in 35 U.S. states from Canada to Florida. And this beetle gets its common name because of its behavior. When it finds a small dead animal, it buries that animal in the ground and raises its offspring on it. So back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, one of the species this beetle used was the passenger pigeon. Passenger pigeons are now extinct, and that probably impacted the beetle. Other things have also caused the loss, so now it only occurs in seven U.S. states at the very edges of where it used to occur. Rhode Island, and then all the way over here in the west, in Oklahoma, a little into Arkansas, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota. You have a few examples here for us. Um, let's look at the close cousin, I guess, of the American burying beetle. There are a number of species of burying beetles in the state of Oklahoma, and they're recognized by having this black and orange pattern. So they're Oklahoma state colors. Uh, this species is called Necrophorus orbiculus, and it's a night active species. It occurs near forests. And you notice it's eh, not large or small for a beetle species. Uh, it is active at night, so right now it's wondering what's going on. And as I uh, mess with it, this beetle will defend itself by actually regurgitating. The endangered species is the American bearing beetle. And you notice it's a little bit bigger than Necrophorus orbiculus. It's the only species that has this bright orangey red, almost police badge behind its head. So it's recognizable in that way. It's active at night, and this is actually a small one. They get to be over an inch and a half to two inches long. When you have a large beetle like this, it means that it reproduced on a large animal. When they find something like this, a male and female will get underneath it. They'll do push-ups to see how much it weighs. If it's the right size, they'll start digging a hole under there, and the animal will then fall into the hole. They do that so that other animals don't get to the dead animal. Uh, so they keep uh, scavengers like coyotes or raccoons from eating this animal, and then they get it underground so they can use it to reproduce on. And they're actually really strong. Usually the animal that they're using to breed on weighs between 100 and 200 times more than they do. So a 200 pound person would be burying something that weighs 2,000 pounds in about an hour. Which is kind of hard to wrap your head around. <laughs> right. Now tell us what they do in a field or pasture situation that is beneficial in terms of agriculture. A small mouse will produce about 200 flies in a period of time. When burying beetles get to the carcass first, they prevent the flies from reproducing there. And so a carcass that has burying beetles on it may produce three or four flies, very, very few. And of course, flies will happily visit manure, a dead animal, then your picnic lunch. So they can transmit diseases to humans. They also transmit a lot of diseases to livestock. And so these burying beetles limit the number of flies in an agricultural environment. Second thing they do, once they bury a carcass in the ground and reproduce on it, they increase the nutrients in the soil. They uh, increase nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium, three critical elements for rangeland plant health. So these beetles benefit farmers in a couple of ways directly. Now, as I told you earlier, when you bury a hamburger in the ground, sure, coyotes can't get to it, but it's still gonna rot. The beetles have the same problem. So after they get a carcass underground, they actually coat it with those oral secretions that you saw, and those secretions prevent or limit bacterial growth. So uh, this is a natural form of antibiotic, and someday humans might be able to use that as a drug to treat us for bacterial infections, or as a preservative for meat at room temperature. And that's a huge issue worldwide in terms of preserving fresh meat without access to refrigeration. 
So you and the team here will continue to do research? We will continue to research uh, both the American bearing beetle and related species to determine why it's endangered. Uh, it's disappeared from 90% of its historic range and there's factors that are guessed at like passenger pigeon, conversion to agriculture, but we don't know why it's doing so well here in Oklahoma or Nebraska or other places. And eventually if we figure that out, we can reintroduce the beetle to places like Ohio, Missouri, establish a population, gain the benefits, and eventually get the beetle off the federally endangered species list. Okay, fascinating information. Wyatt Hoback, an entomologist here at OSU. Thanks, Linda.